Smith had something to say about Tupac. I told you, like clockwork, every time somehow with goes on with his name, she's always got a boom, boom, bang. And of course, she's selling her book and whatever. She didn't push his agenda all the time. And talking about her and Will Smith, <clears throat> well, you know, that's Hollywood dysfunction. You know what else up with that. But let me get back to about her, her beloved Tupac, because it seems like she won't be happy. And somehow she claims she isn't Juliet and looking at him as Romeo, but you could fool me. She's got stuff to say 30 years later. And this one, she said she told him never to sign with Death Row Rocket. Well, duh. But does she understand why he had to? I mean, he has some serious charges in New York State. Now, I'll, I've always pointed this out, and I've said this before. <clears throat> he was already on Interscope Ruckus. Jimmy Iovine used the hook and wink. Death Row was distributed and marketed through Interscope. And what they did is they passed him down. It's kind of like a sweet move, sweet deal, if you will, because Death Row was making so much cha-ching. And Jimmy Iovine... <clears throat> making mad corn off another field hand like Suge Knight, and I call him a field hand because, you know, they get these brothers just like Clyde Davis got puffing. You be a good boy and you bring them in, you bring them in. They get some money, but the cast behind them got the bag. That's what people feel realized. But Death Row, especially it tapped into it about the NWA situation where they were bad for the culture. Death Row Ruckus, think about that name. Think about what Snoop Dogg was facing before his case 30 years ago, everything happened. Then you get Tupac and everything. Look at all the legalities that happened. <clears throat> if you're a lawyer, you love Death Row Ruckus. If you were an artist, that's another story. Tupac had to change and assimilate himself to fit in to what Suge wanted to put out there. And unfortunately, he did. He acted in a different way than he was when the Me Against the World Ruckus was out. He was a different cat. And like someone has always said, he becomes different characters through different scenes. So she's right about this, but there were a lot of people that were right about this. I say this because when Dr. Dre broke free of death row, I heard people from Luther Vandross and different people were coming up to Dr. Dre and dapping him up. <clears throat> we're happy that he got out of that plantation, out of that obvious sentence that had no happy ending. And I do believe that Pac had to go to be free. I said it. And Death Row was just another chain, another link on the plantation. So she ain't lying about this, but this was kind of like if you were obvious to what the implications and the culture was about. And the music was on secondary. And Tupac was a writer, artist, poetic, but he had to write all that to get out because they owned him. They owned him. And then they came out with that corny movie, which made the Biggie Notorious movie almost look more, more than a TV movie watchable. So she ain't lying about this, but she keeps saying stuff to always, like she still got a Tupac poster around and she's still daydreaming <clears throat> and he ain't coming back. <clears throat> and this is just the obvious. There's a lot going on with that. And that's why I say the industry is responsible for the deletion of Pac and Biggie. Because there's a billion dollars going on. I'm going to do another video about that, but they know. They know. And, I, and there's a lot more to this. Please hit like, subscribe, welcome thoughts, comments. And I do respond. Thank you. Wash your hands. Keep in mind. Clear. Watch out for another and share the review. Like, I'm a piece.